Hello guys, welcome to another practical DevOps tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to set up an automated Kubernetes cluster on Vagrant using the Kubernetes utility. I have the entire tutorial as a blog in devopscube.com. Please check the description where I have given all the links to the required documentation and scripts to follow this tutorial. You can use the blog link in the description as a reference for the entire setup. Before I get into the practical session, I will just walk you through the summary of the setup. A single Vagrant app command will create three VMs and configures all essential Kubernetes components and configurations using kubeadm. To have a fully functional cluster, we need to add few more tools to the setup because kubeadm only sets up bare minimum required configurations. For example, we need to add a network plugin to enable pod networking. In our case, it's Calico network plugin. To check the CPU memory usage of the pods and node, you need a metric server. To weave all Kubernetes objects in the UI, you need a Kubernetes dashboard. All three components get installed as part of this setup. The kubeconfig file required to run the kubectl commands gets added to all the nodes in the cluster so that you can execute kubectl commands from any node in the cluster. Also, the kubeconfig file and the Kubernetes dashboard access token gets added to the configs folder where you have the vagrant file. You can use the config file to connect to the cluster from your workstation as well. Once you are done playing around the cluster, you can shut down the VMs when not in use and start them again whenever needed. All the cluster configurations remain intact without any issues. When you start the servers, the worker node gets connected automatically to the master node. You can delete all the VMs in one command and recreate the setup with the vagrant up command anytime you need. Now I will walk you through the vagrant file and scripts that are part of this setup. If you look at the repo, you will find the Vagrant file and the scripts folder that contain three shell scripts. Let's have a look at the Vagrant file first. Here at the first block, I am adding three static IPs to HC host file. It's a common shell provisional block that gets executed on all the VMs created by this Vagrant file. This Vagrant file by default creates three VMs with these IP addresses. If you increase the worker node, then you need to add the next IP address to this list. The next block is for master node configuration. We are allocating 10.0.0.10 for the master node. We are calling the common.sh and master.sh shell script with a shell provisioner. I will explain the scripts in a bit. In the next block, we have a loop to create the worker nodes. This loop creates two worker nodes with IPs 10.0.0.11 and 10.0.0.12. The last number of the IP address is derived from the loop counter variable. If you increase the loop counter number from 2 to 3, you will have 3 worker nodes. Let's have a look at the common.sh script. Here we are disabling the swap as it is a requirement for the kubeadm. And all the other commands are pretty self-explanatory. Overall it installs docker and we are specifically installing version 1.20 of kubeadm, kubelet and kubectl. Because I created the script for creating a practice environment for Kubernetes certification. If you want the latest version of Kubernetes, just remove the version from the command. Now let's look at the master.sh script. Here I have declared three variables, a master IP, pod network CIDR and a system hostname variable. These variables get substituted in the kubeadm init command. If you notice, the pod CIDR is of 192 series. It is essential to have a non-overlapping IP address range for the nodes and pods. Otherwise, you might run into routing issues while deploying and accessing applications. I have faced these issues before. Then we copy the generated kubeconfig to the home location to execute the kubectl commands. In Vagrant, the slash Vagrant directory on every VM is a shared host folder that contains a Vagrant file. This means even the worker nodes share the same slash Vagrant directory because we create all the VMs from a single Vagrant file. So we use this directory to hold all the configs required for worker nodes to connect to the master. If you see, we are copying the config file to the slash vagrant slash configs directory and creating a join.sh script. Then we generate the join command and direct the output to the join.sh script so that the nodes can access this file and join the master node automatically. Then we are installing the Calico plugin, metric server and Kubernetes dashboard directly from the manifest available in the public GitHub repositories. Also, to access Kubernetes dashboard, you need an admin token. So here we are creating the admin user service account and 
bind it to the admin user cluster role to have full access to the Kubernetes components to the dashboard. Finally, we use kubectl to get admin token and write it to the slash vagrant slash configs token file. We can use this token to log into the dashboard. I'm also copying the kubeconfig file to the vagrant home folder so that you can execute kubectl without logging in as sudo. Now let's have a look at the configs directory. This directory and the files inside get created only after you execute the vagrant command. The config file is the kubeconfig required to run the kubectl commands. As you can see, it contains a master API and the certificate details required for master API access. The join.sh file contains the join command generated by the master.sh script. In the node.sh script, all we do is execute the join.sh command from the shared slash vagrant folder and copy the kubeconfig file to the node. Now that we have enough understanding about the script, let's get right on to the demo. I have added the GitHub repository link in the description. Open the link and copy the repo link. Open the terminal and clone the GitHub repo in a directory of your preference. CD into the clone repo. Execute the vagrant up command. When you run for the first time, Vagrant will download the specified Ubuntu image from the Vagrant cloud. It will take a couple of minutes or more based on your internet speed. It is a one-time activity. Once the image is downloaded, it will start provisioning the VMs and executes the scripts from the script folder. All the three VMs get created one after the other. First, the master node will get created and the master.sh script copies all required files to the shared slash Vagrant slash configs folder. Then worker nodes will be provisioned and runs the node.sh script that will run the dynamically generated join.sh script to the join master node. Then worker nodes will be provisioned and runs the node.sh script that will run the dynamically generated join.sh script to join the master node. The total provisioning time ranges between 15 to 30 minutes based on your internet speed, but it is a one-time provisioning activity. Once you have the cluster up and running, you can shut down and start the VMs within two minutes. I will show you that at the end of this demo. For the purpose of demo, I'm going to skip right to the completed stage. As you can see, the Vagrant successfully provisioned the Kubernetes nodes. Let's check the status of the VMs using Vagrant command. Perfect, all the three nodes are in running state. Now that the cluster is provisioned, let's log in to the master node. We use the VM name to SSH. In our case, the VM name is master. Like I explained earlier, the kubeconfig file gets added to the Vagrant user to the home location. Let's see if the file is present there. Now that we have the config file, let's list the nodes using kubectl. Awesome. We can see all the nodes in the ready state. Let's try the same by logging into a worker node as well, just for the validation. Great, it works as expected. You can execute kubectl from all the nodes as the scripts added the config file to all the nodes. Now back to the master node. Let's list all the pods in the kube system namespace and ensure all the cluster pods are running. Great, everything is in running state. You can see the Calico and metrics server pod running. This got installed from a separate manifest file as it is not part of kubeadm configuration. Let's list the Kubernetes dashboard deployment from the Kubernetes dashboard namespace. Dashboard deployments are working without any issues. Let me try getting the CPU and memory usage of pods. Great, it's displaying the CPU and memory metrics. Now let's deploy a sample Nginx application on the default namespace and see if we are able to access the application on node port. I'm directly executing the Kubernetes manifest from GitHub. I have added the manifest file in the description. Let's check the deployment status. It is in running state. Let's describe the Nginx service and see to which node port it is listening.
you can see it is listening to port 32000. I am going to try accessing the app from the browser on node port. I am using the node 01 IP address which is 10.0.0.11. Great, we are able to get the Nginx homepage. This means all our cluster configurations are working as expected. The Kubernetes dashboard is already running in your cluster. To access the dashboard, you need to run kubectl proxy locally in your workstation, not from the Kubernetes nodes. The current terminal you are seeing is my workstation terminal, not the Kubernetes node. Also, I have kubectl installed on my workstation. Make sure you have kubectl installed on your workstation to execute kubectl commands. First, you need to copy the config file to the .kube directory of your workstation. You can also export the kubeconfig variable to access the Kubernetes API from the workstation terminal. I'm going to set up the variable. I'm executing this command from the configs directory where I have the config file. This works on Linux and Mac systems. I have added this command in the description. Also, you can copy the config file to .cube folder under the home directory. Create the .cube folder if you do not have one. Let's run the kubectl proxy now. It is running. Now you can access the dashboard from the browser on localhost using a specific dashboard link. I have given the dashboard link in the blog and in the description. To log in, we need a token. In our case, the token is present in the configs folder. It gets created during the provisioning. Open the token file and copy the token. Try logging using the token. Awesome, we are able to log in and see the components in the dashboard including our Nginx deployment. Just to validate, browse through all the options in the dashboard. Now that you have a working cluster, you can start playing around with the cluster and deploy applications. To persist data on pods, use the local storage class. It will make sure your pod data persists even after the pod or system restarts. Now, to shut down the cluster, all you have to do is just execute the vagrant halt command. It will shut down all the three VMs. If you check the vagrant status, you can see the VMs in power off state. To start the cluster again, just run Vagrant up. Within two minutes, you will have the VMs up and running with all the cluster configurations intact. You can verify it by running the kubectl commands. That's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you face any issues, you can raise the issue in a GitHub repository and drop a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you in my next tutorial.